The convention will kick off right here in Cleveland. And joining us now is Donald Trump's campaign chairman, Paul Manafort. The celebrities are kind of a strange hodgepodge, unless I'm missing something, and then it's family. And there's not a lot of major Republicans coming to town. Uh, Where's John Kasich? Meeting. Is he coming and speaking? Uh, except for one or two. The pe- yeah. be- <laughs> <laughs> He's the uh, governor look, K- of Kasich, the state. Kasich is the only... Yeah, and you know what? He's making a big mistake. Uh, he's embarrassing the state, frankly. Folks, I'm supposed to leave with Governor Kasich. I'm from Ohio. I'm going to grab my bag. Sorry. I'm Doug Price, and I'm a member of John Kasich's kitchen cabinet and as an informal senior advisor and was privileged and pleased to travel with him on every single trip in his presidential campaign for 17 months. Bittersweet keeps entering my mind, although there's a little more bitter than sweet. Uh, Not angry at Donald Trump. Still surprised at uh, how this campaign has uh, so far played out. Some delegations are a little less enthusiastic because they were supporting other candidates. Ohio, the mother of presidents, proudly cast its 66 votes for Governor John Kasich. Lots of folks who say, well, you shouldn't be bitter. The fact of the matter is, John Kasich's not bitter at all. Uh, I'm not bitter. There isn't a bitter person in his group. It is my honor to be able to throw Donald Trump over the top in the delegate count tonight with 89 delegates. And another six for John Kasich. Congratulations, Dad. We love you. You know, they say the softest pillow is a clear conscience. I think all of our consciences are, are, are pretty clear, and uh, the governor's been up here working very hard, welcoming delegations outside the arena. Are you having fun? Are you having a great time? You know, we, we hear a lot about negative and division and polarization, and, and we're down and we're down. Let me tell you, I'm an optimist about America. Believe that standing on principle and having ethics and integrity can make a huge deal. Do you think he's being a sore loser? Well, I don't want to say that, but you know what? Uh, It was a very contentious primary. He lost very, very badly. And maybe if I were in his position, I wouldn't show up either. Every campaign has to make this transition, right? You go from an ugly primary to now having to endorse the person who actually made it onto the ticket. What is always fascinating, though, I think, is when the former hopefuls have to speak. Right. And we're going to hear from Ted Cruz tonight. What does Ted Cruz say tonight? Well, first of all, we're not sure he's going to endorse him. Don't stay home in November. Stand and speak and vote your conscience. Vote for candidates up and down the ticket who you trust to defend our freedom and to be faithful to the Constitution. What I find interesting is we always run into voters and citizens who say we want leaders who have the courage of their conviction and yet i think we're seeing the governor's courage playing out because he's remaining where he was throughout the the campaign sticking by his principles and not compromising on them 
Nobody knows the system better than me. Which is why I alone can fix it. There have been points along the calendar where it's been suggested by others or by the Trump campaign or Mr. Trump himself that, okay, this is now going to be different. Perhaps we've arrived, we certainly have arrived at one of those points on the calendar. So let's see how it plays out. It could start, many of us say should start, from the mouth of the nominee. Honestly, that was all about unity. And we may be missing a couple of people. We may be missing. Again, I don't want his endorsement. If he gives it, I will not accept it, just so you understand. If he gives it, I will, I will not accept it. It won't matter. 